Welcome to another podcast of the current situation at Manchester United. This is not going to be one of the long-winded videos. I'm just going to get straight into the the point. Um, yeah, Manchester United is going to host, I believe. Let me check just to be sure. Is it they're going to be the host or they're going to be hosted by Everton tomorrow in the EFL Cup? So I was actually correct when I said Manchester United in my last video podcast that United didn't get knocked out of the League Cup. Now, it has to do with priority. It has to, hold on, because I want this. You see, I didn't want to. I didn't want this flag to be seen when RB Leipzig knock us out in the Champions League because yeah, not, they knock us out in the Champions League. But there, Everton is going to be hosted tomorrow. By Manchester United at Old Trafford once again, so the lights will be shining again at Old Trafford, in the absence of persons, of course, just to decrease the level of of uh, COVID nineteen. Um, and the predicted starting lineup for both teams, as it says here in the Carabao Cup, it says here that Everton is going to. All right, let's start with Manchester United because. That's a, that's our primary side that we support. So it says that Henderson will play Williams, Twan CB with Maguire. Again, bro, Maguire needs to be rested. Play Phil Jones. Dare I say, play, play Phil Jones or play someone that is capable of playing as a centre back. We don't want to burn out our Maguire at centre back. Not because he's our captain means he should be playing every game. He has he doesn't have unlimited batteries that can be can be charged by the sun or where whenever whenever. No, he needs to be rested. He's an a mortal being with with batteries that is that that serve it time and needs charging. We need to be playing somewhere someone else, whether it's um Twan C B with um who else? Who else? Who else? I'm missing someone. Right? Eric Bay. Is Eric Bay even injured or is he, you know, taking up um, space in Manchester United? Because I want to know what he's at. If he's fit, start him. Again, we don't want too much sauce at centre back like having Rojo and Eric Bay. You know, we need compatibility, we need chemistry, and we need, uh, like, for example, if you have Vidic and you have. Um, <laughs> if you have persons like Rojo or that's not going to be a match, it's going to be a mismatch. You're going to have too much hot pepper sauce in your defense. Cause the likelihood of you getting a red card or someone getting booked is very high. So it is imperative that you have one cool head centre back at least and one level headed centre back. Which is not really level headed because when he's going into tackles he ain't go relax so as relates to the rest of this side Matic it says here we'll start with Pogba Greenwood Van der Beek that needs game time James and Cavani yeah Cavani needs game time because he was injured and him getting game time is going to actually give him much fitness and as well as James yeah James got a goal against Holland against Leeds United so I think his confidence will probably give him a somewhat of a presence or in the starting yeah, presence in the starting level. You know, just to build on that confidence. But I don't think Ole wants him to get over on himself because if he does, my man is going to want to start every game. And that's not going to be a reality for him. So you know, my man just needs to stay in his lane and just take third string place at right wing. So as well, it's Everton. I think Everton is going to start a quite strong squad with Richardson, Sigurdsson, Iwobi, Dave, uh, Davies, or Davies, Davies, Gomez, or Gomes, yeah, Gomez, Coleman, Keane, and Calvert-Lewin. I don't care if they risk Calvert-Lewin or not. He's not our striker. So if they want to burn him out, they have, without a shadow of doubt, let them do that. They have the rights. They have, they have the free say so to do so, isn't it? So I, I, I'm not going to give my opinion on that division. Um, 
as relates to Manchester United though, given our form. You guys who support Manchester United are supposed to know that whenever Manchester United has had a convincing win or a win that kind of resonates with a lot of Manchester United fans, people saying, yes, this is, the, this is the needed win that we want to keep the, the, the shells off our, back, off our, our shoulders, so to speak, just to, keep, just to keep on heap of the pressure somewhat. But during Manchester United history, if you look through their criminal record, their, their dates and games where Manchester United actually played well and in the next uh, uh, in the next game they didn't play so well they had a misspell in that particular game whether they lost which is usually the uh, the result or they draw and it's based on what I've been saying ever since Manchester United hold on Manchester United is not consistent with their form they're not very consistent and that could be a talking point could be due to different individuals different personal different persons starting and that's a talking point but what you cannot leave out is that a style a style of play needs to be displayed consistently you cannot put a, a style of play on the bench and substitute that in the second half I'm talking about a consistent, like a primary. If you want to change plan to plan B and go long road like Stoke in 2009 when they were playing in their prime, then do so, If you're even if you are behind. But you need to have a primary. You need to start the game off with a primary plan of style of play. You cannot, have, you cannot just play players on the pitch without a style of play. You need to have a proactive, because what I've been noticed with Excuse my French. What I've noticed with Manchester United for the past two to three years is that Manchester United has a, has a tendency to concede first and given fast forward to 90 minutes, they actually won the game. And the, the summary point you can get from that is that we are very reactive. We are not proactive. We are not aggressive enough to actually score first. So we don't want to score we don't want them to concede first. We want to concede first and conceive our goal. But the goalkeeper is saying, no, we, we shouldn't we should be allowing that. That's why we have strikers in our side. We need to be scoring goals first. If, if you concede a goal, then of a big tour or something, then that's fine. But we need to be scoring goals. We need to be very proactive in our style of play to display on the pitch. My thing is this. Hmm. My thing is this. Is Manchester United supposed to prioritize the, the, the Carabao Cup? Given where we are in the Carabao Cup, yes. We have decent players that can actually qualify for the semi-finals hold on, in the Carabao Cup. And we are playing against Everton. Um, Everton is a decent squad. Decent side. They have a decent um, coach. Actually, speaking of his coach, Carl Ancelotti today makes marks a year since he's been in, in the Everton job. Yeah, one year. Win, one year. Um, so I'm, apparently he's going to want some salvation or anniversary gift on the side in beating Manchester United, taking, them, taking that side out of the Carabao Cup. I don't know who else is in the Carabao um, Cup, but we should, re re we should really be concentrating on that. We should be concentrating on ourselves and getting goals first with a verse of style of play on the pitch. That's what Manchester United need to be doing. And given the predicted lineup, I don't think I have a motivation to give my predicted lineup. If you are giving your predicted lineup in an article, well, because I'll just be biting off what you guys are saying in the article. What this person has actually seen. But um, some things show my ears that I feel compelled. Two things before I put this video podcast. Two things. First of all, in terms of transfers, it's apparently made clear to me that Manchester United is interested in a player known as Moises. He's from Colombia, I think. No, actually, Ecuador. Uh, yeah, Ecuador. His name is Moises. Casido, I know I'm messing up. Casido, I think Casido, Moises Casido. 
and he's a midfielder. He plays for uh, Ecuador clearly, but in terms of on a club level, I think he plays for this thing of a club or something. Hold on. Okay, we'll 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 we'll, we'll get into that um, some other time, but. Basically, he's interested. I think Manchester United is going to actually sign this dude in the coming weeks. So this is a, tr a chance for we need to be on the lookout for. Um, he claims that Paul Pogba is his idol, and I mean, if Paul Pogba is your idol, bro, we have a big thing coming because we don't need a Pogba times two or a Ravel Morrison times three. Given that well, Ravel Morrison and Paul Pogba is from the academy of Man United, and he's not, but we don't want that type of ego, you know, in our squad. So again, if he, that if that is his um his idol, we we have to be wary of this dude. We have to put him on um we have to put him on the wall. He put his name on the wall, and just you know yeah. So my thoughts on the transfer, good good. We it's 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 showing a sense of intent. Intention for Manchester United, more specifically Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, because he wants to get young players in his squad. We look at Pelestri, we have uh, we have Edison Cavani, who is going to be more of a mentor to Pelestri because you are, both of them are from Uruguay. Um, Martial is young, Rashford is young, Daniel James is young, Jesse Lingard is not young anymore. Um, Paul Pogba is getting off age. When he's going on the blank book page called Prime, he's in his prime years, you know. So he's not really a young player per se. Um Wambasaka is young. Twan C B is young. Fosimensa is young. Phil Jones is not young, he's out of the uh, uh, squad. So we this is a sense of sense of intention. A sensation of intention from Oliguno Soshka. He's trying to get Young, young blood into the squad. He's trying to prune the squad. Speaking of Jess Lingard, I believe Jess Lingard is going to play tomorrow. I don't think he'll start, but I believe he will play tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to give my predicted lineup. Yeah, my predicted lineup. Henderson in goal, Williams in goal. Uh, not Williams in goal. We don't need two goalkeepers. Williams at left back. Um. I think Alex Stace is actually playing, so let's scratch that. Put him at left back, Williams at right back, centre back pairing. I don't think Magoya, I don't think, I wouldn't agree with it because Magoya is not God Almighty and he doesn't have, you know, ongoing batteries. Like he's not on life support with his batteries, so I don't think he needs to be starting tomorrow. Twan CB at centre back with someone else at uh, centre back. I'm not sure as yet whether probably it's Eric Bay. Which would be too much sauce because him and Twan C B have the same defensive nature, which is not really a good thing. We need um yeah. So in midfield, Matic needs game time. Danny Van der Beek needs game time. Um Daniel James, Cavani. Basically, I'm trying I'm just basically reiterating the predicted lineup. Is me? Um Jan Greenwood, so it's going to actually, I think Manchester United is going to actually win somewhat comfortably because we have the squad to beat Everton respectfully. No disrespect to Everton, but we have the squad. So we should be battering them. Battering them. Battering them. No, no ifs or buts. We should be battering Everton tomorrow. We should not be like Arsenal. Well, Arsenal has been like that for a good while now. So we're not going to really bother them that much. But we need we need we need to just put and push Everton out of the way and not and advance to the semi-finals. That's what Manchester United need to be doing. So again, my prediction is um two one. Talking about this missing Everton convincingly, two one. Yeah, that's my score for tomorrow's game at Old Trafford against. So my guys think my head is receding or something. That's why I have a cap. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say the same thing as well. Um, so that's my predicted lineup for tomorrow. And my predicted score, as I just stated, is 2-1. Score is down below. And who you think will be starting for Manchester United in the uh, 
in the Carabao Cup sem- quarterfinals. Let's not let's not fast forward in the um tomorrow's game. So again, your prediction. We think we'll be starting. Like and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down below. That's free of choice. I don't bite unless you want me to. I don't block if you unless you want me to. Um, just that piece. This is a free ground to to be to to just express your opinion on Manchester United, and I'll show it to you guys. Mm, maybe maybe not, but I'll show. I'll see what happened. But I'll show it to you guys in the next video podcast, expressing my match reaction, which will not be a long video, but that's yeah. I'll be doing that afterwards. So keep you keep you guys posted until tomorrow.